Hey everybody, I am Sam and I am back with another lecture on the laryngeal cartilages which is kind of a part 2 of the lecture after the introduction video, alright? So if you have gone through the introduction video on the larynx where I told you the structure all that are located in the larynx but in this video we are particularly going to talk about the laryngeal cartilages which are actually in total nine but if you want to make the pair and unpaired in two groups so there will be two groups that will be three paired cartilages and three unpaired cartilages so there are total nine cartilages located within your larynx three unpaired and six paired they form the laryngeal skeleton which provides your rigidity and stability so first we'll be talking about the unpaired cartilage for this we'll be using this diagram and first I have to clarify everything first I have to remove the major structures or you can say hide them so I can make it easy for you to grab a good image of the larynx alright so hide not others actually this one alright so again hide this one as well alright so now we are purely left with this part of your larynx this is your larynx so first we'll be talking about the unpaired cartilages of larynx so there, there are three unpaired cartilages of the larynx first I'm going to name them and then we are going to talk about each and every one the first <coughs> I'm sorry the first cartilage is your thyroid cartilage this big structure you can see this is your thyroid cartilage and behind your thyroid cartilage on the uh, interior surface this is your epiglottis this big structure epiglottis and on inferior surface we have got uh, the cricoid cartilages this is your cricoid cartilage just beneath your thyroid cartilages the first talk about the thyroid cartilage so the thyroid cartilage is a large prominent structure which is easily visible in adult males you know it is composed of two sheets which is called lamina so this is your first side of lamina this is the other sheet of lamina which they both join together entirely to form this prominence this prominent structure in front of them which is also called the Adam's apple which you can also uh, you can feel it in the uh, anterior of your neck if, if you are male it's more prominent in male compared to females the posterior border of each sheet you can see as you we go posterior uh, the posterior border of each sheet projects superiorly and as well as inferiorly so super superior and which are called the superior horns and the inferior horns or you can call this superior cono or inferior cono the superior horn are connected to your hyoid bone you can see posteriorly they are connected to the hyoid bone and uh, the inferior which is the superior one connected to the white one through this uh, what we call lateral thyrohyoid ligament there's a lateral thyrohyoid ligament <clears throat> the inferior horns articulate with the cricoid cartilage just down there <clears throat> in an area in the cricoid cartilage now let's talk about the cricoid cartilage itself <clears throat> first I'm going to separate the cricoid cartilage so for example this is uh, this is your cricoid cartilage I'm going to hide other structures I'm going to actually fade other structures so this is your cricoid cartilage you can see it easily like big back lamina on back side <clears throat> so the cricoid cartilage is a complete ring of cartilage there is no complete ring of cartilage in your complete larynx except this cricoid cartilage you can see it in in this picture that it's a completely ring like cartilage <clears throat> so this is your anterior view of the cricoid cartilage which is a consistent of broad sheet on the posterior and much narrow arc on the anterior side so the cartilage completely encircles your airway making the inferior body of the larynx at the level of C6 we know that uh, the uh, larynx is between C3 and C6 so this is the ending point of your larynx which is formed by the cricoid cartilage it articulates with the arytenoid cartilage if I just remove the fat others 
you can if you go posteriorly you can see it joins with the retinoid cartilage so this is the retinoid cartilage just a bit above the cricoid cartilage if i click on it and this is your retinoid cartilage on the posterior side as well as providing attachment for the inferior horns of your thyroid cartilage so we have seen it provides attachment for the inferior horns on the sides of it uh, remember the cricoid cartilage is the only <coughs> sorry complete circle of your cartilage in the larynx we talked about that this is of and why is it important why I'm repeating that because it's of clinical <coughs> uh, importance uh, because during emergency intubation you know we can apply pressure to the cricoid cartilage to occlude the esophagus esophagus is, is directly located behind if you, if you see it from anterior view you can see the esophagus if, if I add up the, the digestive system as you can see the esophagus so if I add the digestion you can see esophagus is just located behind the larynx so behind the cricoid cartilage the esophagus locus, and thus we pr provide pressure on cricoid cartilage which actually applies back pressure on the esophagus and uh, this prevent the regurgitation of the gastric contents which is also called as the cricoid pressure or salix maneuver <coughs> now uh, let's remove the digestive system and talk about this one properly. All right, so now talk about the cricoid cartilage. So in cricoid cartilage, we have to remember the laryngopharynx. Uh, we got it. All right, all right. So let's talk about the epiglottis. So this is a leaf-like structure. You can see down there the epiglottis. In the posterior view, you can see the epiglottis this way. On the anterior view, you can see this way. If I hide other structure, you can have a proper view of the cricoid cartilage. Okay, I cannot have it proper picture. All right, let it be this way. So the epiglottis is a leaf-like structure. You can see a leaf-shaped plate of elastic cartilages, which marks the entrance of your larynx. It's a stalk, and means it is attached to the back of the anterior aspect of your thyroid cartilage if you can see just down there if I zoom it in and you can see it on the anterior side this is attached let me zoom it out a bit and uh, yeah you can see it down there exactly attached on the anterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage during swallowing the epiglottis flattens and kind of moves posteriorly to close off your larynx <coughs> So if it close off your larynx, so it uh, won't allow uh, the air or the food to or the food to get inside the trachea. Now let's talk about uh, your paired cartilages, which means they are present on both sides. Uh, the first cartilage we have got is this teeny tiny bitty bitey structure just posteriorly, which is called the arytenoid cartilages. So this is your arytenoid cartilages on the one side and arytenoid cartilage on the other side. If you click on arytenoid cartilage and fed other structures, we can see it properly. You can see the arytenoid cartilage properly. <coughs> so the arytenoid cartilage, if you see it from the lateral side, if you have a lateral view, if you see it from anterior side, you can view it this way. But I'm moving the diagram on the lateral side so we can uh, study it properly. So the internal cartilages are pyramidal shape structure that side on the cricoid cartilage. You can see it and it is sitting on the cricoid cartilage. They consist of an apex on the superior side and a base and three sides probably on the <coughs> three sides and two processes and provides an attachment point for various key structures in the larynx. For example, in the case of apex, for example, in case of apex, you can see the cricoid cartilage is uh, articulates with the coniculate cartilage, which is just above the cricoid cartilage. It's a left coniculate cartilage. You can see this is cricoid cartilage down here attaching on the apex to the coniculate cartilage. And on the base, it articulates with the superior border of the cricoid cartilage. If I zoom it out, you can see this is superior. Uh, this is the cricoid cartilage attaching to the base of the superior cartilage. Now, talk about the vocal processes. It also provides attachment for the vocal ligament. And when can where can you see the vocal ligament? Just if, if, if I zoom inside a little bit back, and this is your this is it. This is it. You got this. On the inferior surface, you can see this is your 
vocal ligament just down there from anterior surface providing the attachment for the vocal ligament and the other attachment it has got is for the muscular processes for the posterior and lateral cricoarytenoid mus uh, muscles the third ligament which is paired with the third cartilage which is paired is called corniculate cartilage i just show you in, in a, just just a bit and this is the corniculate cartilage the corniculate are minor cartilage structure they articulate with the apices of the arytenoid cartilage, cartilage i just showed you a second bit the the last cartilage which is also paired cartilage which you cannot see in this diagram or in this picture because the cuneiform cartilages are located within the array of epiglottic folds they have no direct attachment but act to strengthen the folds so this is it uh, the cartilages of your larynx very easy very simple if you think you need any other lecture on any other topic please make sure to leave us a comment and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get a notification whenever we upload a video see you next time keep visiting tag schooling and keep also visit our website that is www.tigschooling.com